Well, good morning. Thank you for being here. My name is Juan Hidalgo, and I serve as the County of Monterey Agricultural Commissioner and Sealer of Weights and Measures. And accompanying me this morning are agricultural industry representatives as we prepare to release the 2023 crop report. So we have Norm Groot, Executive Director with Monterey County Farm Bureau, uh, Mary Sinsky, Task Force Administrator with the Grower Shipper Association of the Central Coast, and Jason Smith, President and CEO of for Valley Farm Management. So thank you all for being here this morning. Um, it is a great pleasure to release the 2023 crop report this year. Uh, the theme of the report is Together We Rise, uh, which reminds us of the resiliency of our communities and the drive of our growers to face some of the uh, severe weather challenges that uh, we have seen in our county and in our state in the last decade, uh, and the innovation uh, and technology that is going to continue to uh, be created to manage and be ready for the challenges of the future. Uh, the crop report for 2023, the value uh, for 2023 is of $4.35 billion. That is a decrease of 6% compared to that 2022 crop report value of $4.6 billion. Um, so overall, it's a good crop report. I think the change and decrease in value reflects some of the challenges that our agricultural industry faced in 2023 with the excessive rain that we saw that year. Strawberries continue to be our number one commodity at $903 million, followed by leaf lettuce at $782 million. Head lettuce is $493 million, broccoli $468 million, and wine grapes uh, round up our top five commodities at $194 million for 2023. Um, these are gross production values, so they don't represent the cost for labor, cooling, transportation, field preparation, for instance. Um, generally, when we look at the production year for 2023, we saw decreased production that year. A lot of that can be attributed to some of the very wet winter that we experienced, as I mentioned earlier. Um, there was also a cool, cooler than usual spring and a cooler than usual summer, start to the summer last year, which also impacted the start of some of our commodities. I think overall, um, you know, the impacts from the weather that year were tempered by uh, market demand and some of the high value for some of our commodities would actually help to maintain uh, good values for a lot of what is produced in our county. Several commodities had a really good year. Uh, you can take wine grapes as one of those commodities which actually benefited from uh, all the rain that we had uh, last year that increased the yields and the production, the gross production value for wine grapes increased by 12%. Other commodities that had a pretty good year last year also include bok choy, carrots, leeks, cilantro, uh, and and also, um, yeah. So those are some of the commodities that also so benefited from a, from a good year last year. Uh, we saw an increase in uh, planted acreage as well as uh, an increase in the value for those commodities. Organic production is a big part of our county. Uh, organic gross, gross production value accounts for 19% of the total gross value of the crop report at $821 million for organic commodities that were produced in our county in 2023. And also uh, organic acreage accounts for about approximately 18% of all the harvested and planted acreage here in Monterey County, which is a pretty staggering number, quite significant actually, considering that we have approximately 360,000 planted acres in our county. Um, and I would like to, express my gratitude to our more than 62,000 agricultural workers and to our growers for their dedication, all of their hard work to continue to produce the high value commodities that make it to our tables uh, and to the tables of our communities and in our state, in our, in our nation on a daily basis. And also for their perseverance, given some of the challenges that 
they have faced uh, in the last few years, especially last year with some of the extra wet weather that we saw in our region. Uh, with that, I would like to give some of our industry representatives an opportunity to make comments. Uh, so I'm gonna call Norm Groot, our Farm Bureau Executive Director to make comments. Thank you, Juan, and I am Norm Groot. I'm the Executive Director of Monterey County Farm Bureau. Uh, last year was, without a doubt, a challenging year for all our growers, humbling us all with weather that made a distinct impact on our crop production systems. Decreases in crop production values across the board reflect the inability to produce during extreme precip precipitation events, cooler spring temperatures and excessive cloud cover, delaying planting schedules for many months. Landowners and growers were forced to deal with catastrophic events in January and March that dissolved levee systems, washed away topsoil, leaving excessive amounts of trash and debris in fields that had recently been planted or were prepared to be planted. Recovery was not easy, not only physically in the fields, but also a financial drain on resources that should have been used for crop production. Local growers received little in state and federal assistance to offset these financial losses. All this contributes to a lower gross production value for our county, but also significant income losses for our farmers. When crops are delayed, harvest is delayed, and that means a loss of revenue that cannot be recovered. The flooding events of 2023 also highlighted the need for improved flood control measures in the Pajaro and Salinas River systems, both of which have aging infrastructure and excessive vegetation blocking capacity flow during times of heavy precipitation. Landowners and farm operators along the Salinas River have yet to obtain any permit relief to improve the capacity flow to minimize the risk of future flooding events. Last year showed us that cycles of drought and heavy precipitation will become more frequent and the community needs to be better prepared for these events as they occur. Managing pests and diseases while bringing crops to harvest yields also continues to be a greater concern with threats coming from INSV, pythium wilt, exotic fruit flies, downy mildew, apple moth, and many others to name a few. Farmers and ranchers are proven to be a resilient group, managing themselves through pandemic, drought, wildfires, and now through a year where weather, indeed too much water, impacted the ability to produce crops in a timely manner. This year's crop report theme, Together We Rise, shows that farmers and ranchers can rise above the challenges and continue to grow our food supply by overcoming these obstacles and adapting to change. Technology continues to modify the way we produce our crops, conserving natural resources and protecting the environment through better agronomics. We must all be aware that these impacts, what these impacts mean to our farmers and our food supply, both local and national, as we manage the risks and challenges of producing fresh food crops here in Monterey County. Thank you. Juan? Thank you, Norm, for your comments. And now I'd like to invite Mary Shinsky for comments. Good morning. Um, I represent the Grower Shipper Association, and uh, my expertise really lies in the area of pest management. And I just want to make the comment that 2023 was a study in contrast compared to what we saw in 2022. 22 was marked by a dry, warm winter, which seemed to encourage our pest problems. And the fall of 2022 was marked by severe crop losses in our uh, major acreage uh, crop, which is lettuce. Um, caused by the vi plant virus INSV, something that we were somewhat terrified about seeing a repeat of in 2023. But as we've noted, we had a very cold, a very wet winter, and this seemed to have had um, a, a resounding impact on our disease situation. So instead of having to fight 
a virus like we had in the prior year, we weren't even getting our crops planted as Norm is so eloquently um, pointed out because our fields were wet, our fields were underwater, and our crop plants were out the window in many cases because of the fact that we couldn't we couldn't get things in the ground in a timely manner. And that had a ripple effect throughout the year in being able to plant not only our first crop of the season, but our second one as well. So we, we are demonstrating to the world that we're a pretty resilient um, area as far as crop production is concerned. We've, we've been challenged with droughts. We've been challenged with severe pest management um, issues, and yet we still put out over a billion dollar crop every year when it comes to lettuce. So with that, I look forward to being able to say that 2024 is going to be a better year than those that have preceded it, but time will tell. And I um, thank you all for, for a, allowing me to make a few remarks today. Thank you, Mary. And now I'd like to invite Jason Smith uh, for some comments. Good morning. Thank you, Juan. Uh, Jason Smith, I'm second generation wine grape grower here in Monterey County Valley Farm Management and past president of the uh, Monterey County Vintners and Growers Association. I think what's unique about our piece of ag is that we are a permanent crop. Um, something that we planted probably 25 years ago at a $25,000 plus or minus cost. Um, and, and I think, you know, while we moved up to number five this year from number seven, um, last year in the crop report, 2022 was one of the worst years ever in the wine grape industry because of the heat waves. And we've talked a lot about climate and how that affects everything. But I think, you know, my main takeaway as we talk about the multi-billion dollar industry of ag that drives this county and it is essential to everything we do here is kind of something Juan touched on is that is a gross number. That is not a, a net number that we're looking at. And I, I will give you in general, <clears throat> th this past year, we're at 40,000 total acres in the wine grape industry. Um, that's down from a high of about 45, 10 years ago. We will go under 40,000. So wine grape acreage is, is coming out. Our tons per acre last year, if you look at total tons harvested versus how many acres, is about a little over three tons of the acre, which is, you know, maybe normal is five. It is so low because there were a lot of wine grapes that actually were not harvested and they were left on the vine. Unlike a lot of our production row crop where, you know, you're on a 90 day cycle um, and, and you can, you can plow things under, you can harvest less, you can do whatever. When you're in a permanent crop and you're harvesting once a year, you're, you're at where you're at. And we're at a perfect storm right now where, where sales are down in, overall alcohol and and specifically in the wine industry worldwide you know lots of changes that we we all know we're dealing with but back to the i think the message for all of agriculture um our gross gross money brought in per acre in 2003 was forty six hundred dollars a ton in 23 2013 it was 5,280. And in 2023, it was $4,800 an acre. The key thing here is in 2003, our costs were probably 70% lower than, than what they are today. In 2023, to just grow a wine grape crop is probably plus minus $5,000 an acre. So we brought in $4,800 an acre. That does not include debt service and all the other expenses. So I think the story that we always tell is that we are resilient and we're going to, we're going to find ways and, uh, and, and we will, my, my positive take specifically on 
Monterey County in the wine grape industry is that we have <clears throat> land, water, and people much better than many other places in the state. And quality. We can grow quality wine grapes. Chardonnay and Pinot Noir are our main because main varieties because it's cool climate. Um, but our cycles take longer to get through and we'll we'll get through there. So uh, pleased to be able to represent today the wine grape industry and look forward to 2024. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jason, for your comments and remarks. <clears throat> now I'd like to open it up uh, to see if there are any questions uh, for us here uh, regarding the crop report. Uh, right, labor continues to be an issue for our uh, growers, not only here in Monterey County, but across our state. Um, we see more of an influx of uh, guest workers over the years. There's more demand to be able to bring H2A guest workers to be able to make up the difference that is needed for labor in the fields. Uh, the unique thing about commodities in our county is that they're fragile, they're labor intensive, so they need they do need skilled labor. Uh, at some point, technology may potentially play a role in uh, helping our growers out, but they're still we're still a ways from that. Uh, there isn't a machine yet that can harvest strawberries or raspberries, which are extremely fragile commodities. Um, and Norm, I don't know if you wanted to make a comment on the labor issue. So certainly labor is is probably the largest input cost in, in a lot of our crops, particularly in the harvest section when we're harvesting our crops, as, as was mentioned, we don't have a whole lot of mechanical harvesting for the crops that we grow here. And so it does require 60,000 hands or more, uh, 60,000 people with hands, excuse me, each year. <laughs> Uh, to harvest our crops, but we are working on mechanization and eventually that will lead to some solutions going forward. But right now we still need those those bodies in the field, so to speak, to harvest our crops. And uh, we will see more, I think, utilization of the H-2A program as our workforce ages here and uh, the residents who currently occupy some of those positions uh, decide to retire. They're not being replaced locally. So we have to figure out how we can use that guest worker program to our advantage and how we can work through the, the national policy discussion of immigration reform and how we work through that 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 political minefield, so to speak, uh, and get something done on a national level that really improves what we do here for specialty crops. Any other questions? What is color with that one? Has the members increased? Um, in looking at some of the data from from last year, we are seeing an increase. Uh, working, uh, getting some numbers from the Employment Development Department, they tend to track some of that data. Um, I can't remember the number off the top of my head, but the trend is that it is increasing. Uh, coming back to the comments that Norm made, you know, we have our domestic uh, workers that are beginning to retire. Uh, so the guest workers are trying to make up the difference to replace uh, those workers at this point, but we are seeing trends of increase for guest workers. Okay. Thank you very much for being here this morning and thank you to our guests, really appreciate it. for all the hard work for you, doesn't it? It's not the work, but I think we know it.